I'm Alan Taylor. My buddy Scott Duffy and I are in search of the best burger in America. Each month we visit a new city to try some of the top restaurants, pubs, and brew houses while sitting down for a candid conversation with some of the top entrepreneurs, athletes, entertainers, and celebrities. I don't know about you, but I love talking business over a burger. Welcome to Business and Burgers. Today we're in beautiful Grants Pass, Oregon, my hometown, to grab a burger at Climate City Brewing Company. Alongside the delicious hoppy craft beers produced at Climate City, they also know how to make one tasty burger. Joining us is Les Stroud, the Survivor Man. Les took what many thought to be an unsellable show and turned it into one of the top docu-series of all time. Les's films cast him into the wild all alone to fight for survival for days at a time. Completely self-shot on small cameras, Les spawned a whole new genre with Survivor Man. The show was a blending of two of Les's passions, filmmaking and nature. Like a true entrepreneur, today Les has pivoted to one of his earliest passions, music. With his art, Les has one driving purpose, to connect people to nature. Well, Les, thank you for joining us. I know my you've been pleasure. traveling a lot, and as the Survivor Man, you're all over the whole world. I want you to meet my buddy Scott Duffy. Scott. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. So here we are, Grants Pass, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And you're Canadian, right? Mm -hmm. You got, what, eight seasons of Survivor Man under your belt now? Oh, it's actually longer than that. Uh, Survivor Man's never gone by seasons. It's been such, it's a, it's been a unique show from the get-go. So I don't even operate in the, in the course of seasons. Like most shows will say I do 13 episodes every year, 26 episodes, whatever. Survivor Man's been going for 16 years. That's I was wow. going to say, because I looked at when you started, it was like 15, 16 years ago. It was 2001. Wow. Including wow. the pilot. How did you get going with this? Oh boy. Um, well, as you know, so much in life, I think what happens as we get older, we build, we build experiences. Right. And I think that a lot of times each experience just feeds back in on itself until you add them up and then you start focusing where you're going, but you're using them all. So with Survivor Man, I had already done rock and roll for a long time, and I worked on rock videos, and then after that I became an outdoor adventurer, and then I started teaching survival, and one day, one day I just put the two together. I thought, you know, these things should be filmed, and they would make some really great films. Mm -hmm. And I called up a, I did a cold call. I'm a very big believer in the cold call, because the worst, worst thing that can happen with a cold call is somebody says no. That's it. That's all they can do. So I did a cold call to a network. I said, here's my idea, me, alone, seven days, no camera crew. I'll bring you back the Odyssey on film. And they said, we were looking to do something exactly like that, and we didn't know who to call. Because wow. you, you were, he, he was wow. like, this guy is the genesis of reality, real reality television. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going I'm to interrupt you right there and say, uh, what I do and what I did and still do is I'm a documentary filmmaker. Um. My passion was Jacques Cousteau and that type of stuff. Right. So Survivor Man is a documentary series. This is the skeleton of a Haywa man, a father. I'm here with his son. And today we performed a come out in ceremony and brought the bones out of the ground. The problem is, reality TV began around the same time, and I got kind of confusingly lumped in with reality tele I hate reality TV. And I stand corrected, you're absolutely right, because it doesn't, it's like, I, we don't know what to call it, and you do, so now we know. Well, and that's been the beauty of Survivor Man, you know, when it first hit, and there was nothing else on television, uh, at all like it, but that was the thing. People would say, you know, and your show just looks so different from everything else on all those channels, and I was hooked, and that was the, the genesis. It's so interesting, the, the idea of a cold call, because I, I was so interested in how in the heck did you sell this idea? Yeah. You know, what did you do? But you just got on the phone, and you never know who you're going to get on the other end but oh, you're, you're in, in the timing. Even you know? more than, than yeah. just got on the phone, I mean, you have to picture me in a pair of track pants and a t-shirt sitting on the edge of my bed pretending to be from a, this is Les Stroud calling from a <coughs> Wilderness Spirit Productions and I've got this idea, you know, but I'm like in my bedroom. Right, right. right. I think that often the, the answer to a lot of situations is if you have a great idea, it's always going to be a great idea. Now someone might beat you to the punch, but a great idea, if, if, if inside you go, you know what would be cool? Yes, is the answer. It w if you're saying, you know what would be cool, then likely case scenario is 99% of the time, it would be cool. So what are you waiting for? Mm. So now, when you got what you asked for, which was the yes. Oh, I was ready. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I was like, yeah. good. Because I was more like, 
good, this is a good idea, and I'm glad you saw it. Now I'm going to go nail it for you. I mean, that first show, which we'll call it the pilot, I mean, they paid me $11,000. That's all I made that year. Yeah, That's wow. all I did wow. that year. I mean, I played some gigs as a musician and made yeah. some side money, but I had two little toddlers at home and a house to, you know, to pay for. But I knew this was going to be the beginning of something. I didn't think it was going to go as big as it did. Uh, and spawn a whole new genre, yeah. but uh, I knew that it was going to be well for me. What was the genesis of the show, though? I mean, were you a guy that loved survival and outdoor? Where did it come from? All right, so, so one of Richard Branson's things is, is always that when you see a need or you see that you can better something, go for it. And for me, survival films, the only time you saw them at all, they were produced by someone who did survival. Well, the film would suck. Or they were produced by someone who did television for um, a weekend magazine format, six minute clip, and the survival would suck. And I basically thought to myself, no, I know good filmmaking and storytelling, but I'm also a survival instructor. Let's put them together. So you were already a survival instructor? Oh, for 15 years. Oh, okay, there you go. Okay, so you, you it was just a no brainer for you. It's both yeah. skill sets. Yeah, That's what I mean. It. Skill sets tend to fall back on themselves as you get older in life. You, you, you know, someone says, hey, can you do this? And you go, well, actually, yeah, I used to be a lifeguard. I can do that. Yeah. You know, next thing you know, you're doing so Where'd I, that come I from? I used to be a lifeguard. There you go. <laughs> you never, and you just never know. Yeah. So I, was, I had done rock videos, and I was a musician, performing musician, but I was then also an adventure guy, like I said. They went together. You know, I think there's so many entrepreneurs out there that feel like every day they're in survival mode. Oh, and, my God. Right? Yeah. And I'm curious, what have you learned about <clears throat> surviving that can be applied to entrepreneurship? There are a lot of cliche, stereotypical realities. There's, there's three styles of executive producers that are connected to the television network. Now the television network is my end client. That's who I'm selling my show to. In between me and them is the, guy, is the gatekeeper. That's the executive producer. And there's three kinds of those. Those who are understand art and are risk takers. It is a creative industry. We're talking about the medium of film, filmmaking, storytelling. Those who understand art and do some risk taking, but also really pay attention to the budgets and the bottom lines. Those who are bean counters. The ones on the left side I love. Survivor Man would not be on television if Steve Burns, who was producing uh, Science Channel and Discovery at the time, had not been a creative risk taker. He's a powerful man in the industry and a wonderful man. He understood taking a risk and he said, I think you got something, let's try it. The bean counter would have said, give me your numbers. I can't prove this out, so let's not try it. Right. Mm -hmm. Give me your numbers has always been goodbye yeah. <laughs> to yeah, me yeah, too, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like you, I'm the same well, way. How do you prove out an idea? I mean, it's so, it's so prevalent today with social media. What are your social media numbers? And, you know, half the, I mean, there are social media companies right now making a fortune off of corporates, and they're feeding them nonsense because they'll, they'll go, oh, we're going to do analytics for you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> analytics, and then we're going to show you your analytics. And in the end, so often, 20% of the time, the analytics tell you a good story. 80% of the time, it's just a bunch of nonsense. Real quickly, going back to the idea of surviving as an entrepreneur. See, but what you did was you led me down the path of what I consider myself to be. Mm. I consider myself to be an artist. I, with my insecurities, would say, well, I'm a mediocre one, but I'm a driven one. So I see, you know, wonderful artists and then I envy them. Of course, they can't get out, they can't, they have no ambition, so they can't make it happen. I'm that other guy in the middle. So the reason why I go down that when it comes to survival and survival in the business sense is every bit of business trade-off I had to do in the industry of television, I was dragged kicking and screaming to. I hate the fact that I'm excellent at TV contracts. I could nail your contract for you and I will know every detail and every line. Because you've made every mistake along because the way. Because I've made those mistakes and I've read them a hundred times. Right. Business is never pretty. Not really. Creation is pretty. Art is pretty. Mm. You know, the, the magic moment is in the middle when business and art can actually coexist together because you achieve the art, right. but you have the sensibility of the business. Because I'm not the businessman. I've all, now, and, th and that's why when he you survived, I survived big time. <laughs> and that's the last survival pun you get in this interview. You just used your only pun. Oh, oh lunch is here. Oh, oh my goodness. What have we this here? is a Wagyu burger. I get yes. the Wagyu burger? Get the Wait a minute, hold on. Burger. I heard there was a Lamborghini burger. You want the Lambo? I'm, I'm a car guy. I'll take you. You take the Wagyu burger. burger. <laughs> all right, here's I'm a car I'll guy. No, 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 I get the Sorry, tots. boys, not me. You give him that. What is on? But this is the Lamborghini burger? Yes, sir. With palm frites. Fresh crown lamb. 
Wagyu beef stuffed with blue cheese and cranberries. And then we got the tater tots over here. These are some Cajun tots. Cajun tots? Yes, and those are some here? palm frites. And what did he get? Regular beer battered french fries. Okay. Because I'm a regular guy. And this, well, this looks really interesting. You got the onion, onion rings on here. The... This is not an average burger for an average guy. This, this is? burger is over the top. Fresh Wagyu beef, peppered bacon, mozzarella, crispy onions, and cheddar cheese. Nice. Wow. With lettuce, tomato, and onions. Well, you did an awesome job. Awesome. I can't Thank wait you. to get my uh, chops around Thank this. So much. <laughs> Thank you. You awesome. guys enjoy. Sink your teeth Appreciate in and it. let me know how it is. Right Thank on. You. Climate City Thank Brewery you. does a good job of serving up some awesome looking burgers. Wow. All right. So how, how do I do that? I, you have to stretch your mouth. You got to do some, 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 <laughs> some exercises is what it boils down to. <laughs> when, when you get these complicated, super complicated, big contracts sent to you, what, what's the first thing that you think? The way I've been able to do so well with Survivor Man is because I, I let the stubborn artist in me flare up and I walk into every meeting knowing I have no issue whatsoever walking out, hmm. walking mm -hmm. on the deal. That's a tough mm. place to be when you have toddlers at home. Mm. Right. You've got to be able to say, if they don't come my way to this point, I'm going to turn around and walk away from my television series, my career, mm -hmm. millions of dollars. Have you ever done it? Have you ever walked away? I, uh, I've never walked away, but I've, I've uh, never walked needed out. to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had to walk out before. Mm -hmm. um, it's not fun. No, it's not. But you've you got to be able to stand there with, and you've got to muster up all the courage and all the faith that you have in yourself mm -hmm. and what you know is right. Mm -hmm. And when, when you feel it and you know it, you've you got to turn and walk. So now you're in the process of pivoting from documentaries yeah. to music. I wanted to feel a wind blow across my face. I want and I'd love to ask you, how do you make that pivot from a place that you've been and you recognize, you know, for being a leader for so long mm -hmm. into another space? It's a very difficult thing to do. Um, it's very, it's like anything. It's very easy to sell your soul and stick with what is good for the money and the bottom line and, and not keep your integrity. And be miserable. And be miserable. Yeah. All of my risks are extremely calculated. And that's so important in business also. I think some people, they just let it fly, right? Without thinking through. Right. That's such an important right. tool. Yeah. That's right. And I... No way, I do think it through. Mm. And I run it by people and I make sure things, you know, and I, and I get outside opinion and so on and so forth. Mm. Now, Survivor Man, the reason why I could go on as long as I have, 16 years, mm. is because they left me alone. Mm. See, I've owned, that's the other tip, I've owned Survivor Man since day one. I've never sold Survivor I don't. They came to me one time. When Survivor Man became big, they came to me and they, they actually said, they being the TV networks, yeah, hey, this is great, Les, yeah, we're moving into the next season here. Uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna commission this now. <clears throat> I know, excuse me, what? Yeah, no, we're going to commission the show now. Commission, to commission a show means they're going to pay for the whole thing, which means they own the whole thing. Well, I didn't say this, but the, implica the implication in my answer was, so for four and a half years, I've taken all the risk mm. trying to get many different networks to buy into my show, to get it on television. You were just one of those networks. And now because it's a hit, you're going to step in and own it, the brand, the marketing, the merchandising, everything. And I just, I, and this was okay, this was one of those moments. I stared him down. I said, no, that's okay. They could have walked away from me. Instead, they created a whole bunch of shows to copy mine. So, but you know what? You still, your show is authentic. Mm -hmm. They cannot duplicate authenticity. No, they can't. And so no matter how hard they tried, there's only one less draft. Well, that's because authenticity is something that you can be. You can't be, do it. You can only, you're either authentic can't copy or you it. are not. Right. There's no, oh, we're going to pretend to be authentic. So you pivot. Talk about So I pivot. pivot. My pivot is, is, again, more of a metamorphosis and a growing than a pivot. But, for example, I'm not turning my back on Survivor Man. Now, that was a lesson I learned really quickly was I've developed a, a, a oh, this sounds horrible, a legion of fans. Mm -hmm. Small legion, but it's a legion. I'm one. <laughs> and... Everybody the, the, worst thing, raised well, <laughs> the worst thing I could do would be to ignore that and say, 
I'm just doing music now. Yeah. Boom, you know. And it's I'm cool. very glad to hear this, by the way. Oh, you because know, because as a fan, uh, yeah. we want you to do your music because well, we want to love that too. Well, it would mean that I wasn't proud of what I did as Survivor Man. I'm very yeah. proud of what I did as Survivor Man. So I'm looking for the ways to still bring what I bring as Survivor Man to the fans. But still metamorphosize as an artist. I don't know how to describe it other than I'm staying true to my true to my mission, true to Which my agenda. Which was there already, even always, even when, like you said, it was always there. You always have to have a base mission. I would prefer if your base mission was not to make money, but your base mission had some kind of altruistic value to it. Yeah. My base mission from day one with Survivor Man was to connect people to nature. Simple. Mm. That's it. I just want you to go back out and love the wilderness again. Love nature. Go on the trails. Hunt, fish, hike, sea kayak, canoe, whatever you do. Just connect to nature. My passion has never been making money. I've done well because of my creative entities have done well. But my passion has been nature. Yeah. And then because I'm a natural performer and I'm a ham and I love the stage and I love storytelling. And you must love music. And I love music. So now all of my music celebrates nature. The two albums I'm about to launch, and we're being produced by Mike Klink, who's a powerful legendary rock producer, Slash plays on it, Steve Vai plays on it. These guys only awesome. got involved yeah. because they saw that the albums were focused on reconnecting people to nature, and in some cases, a call to action. So they're now getting involved, and so many others are getting involved in my music because the baseline mission is the why. Why, why do this? Mm -hmm. Why do I do Survivor Man? Why did I do Survivor Man? Why do I do my music? Because I want to connect people to nature. Yeah. And this is how I do it. Yeah. So you have to have the why. And everything can flow from that. Our interview with Les was so full of great advice, we just couldn't fit it into one episode. Make sure to tune in next time for part two of the Business and Burgers Les Stroud special. Here's some food for thought. Don't be afraid to cold call. The worst they can do is say no. When you see a need and you see you can better something, go for it. Find your why and let everything flow from that. Make sure to come back right here next time for part two of Les Stroud's interview. Here's some of what we have in store. And then along comes this little camera called the VX1000. I basically invented the selfie stick. Should have patented that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> had my selfie stick. Nobody else was doing that. Everything that I had to do as a creator was different than any other TV show. That's right here next time on Business and Burgers. Check out more episodes of Business and Burgers and our B&B blog at our website, businessandburgers.com. And don't forget, visit Business and Burgers on Facebook and give us a big thumbs up. We'll see you next time right here on Business and Burgers.